So this should be a uh, pretty neat clutch. This is a slack line, uh, well, I'll rewind a little. This is a blood python, Python Bronger's Mai. Uh, and shown here is a female slack line, level three, uh, on a clutch of eggs. So level three. Um, <laughs> so slack line, there's a, a number of thoughts as to how it might actually be passed down, but, but by and large, it's mainly a striped snake but there also is kind of like a banded phase. My personal hypothesis is that it's kind of two different genes. You have a, a banded gene that is kind of a reduced pattern gene, and you kind of mix it with really any sort of stripe gene, um, and you end up with something that looks like a, a level three. Um, and level three is just, just a more reduced, clean stripe animal. This is not even, honestly, that great of a level three. I, I'll probably pop in a photo. Um, but at any rate, so yeah, we're gonna just see how she did, and man, that's actually a pretty good, uh, pretty good size clutch for a first size female. 14 and one slug or something like that. That's not bad, not bad at all. And uh, we'll see how dad is hanging out here. Here's dad, this is a Lily Batrix, het T positive. So he is like, just smoking red. Almost so red he's purple. He's a good snake. And he's looking derpy. Okay, so here we go. We got 14 good eggs and one slug. I'm gonna split them up into two six quart nest boxes uh, because that's what I prefer. I got uh, lids. Now these have exactly one hole drilled into them. Nothing crazy. We got press and seal. We have coarse grade vermiculite and we have a scale that just turned off. So first thing we're gonna do. Uh, so I'm just gonna like walk and talk while I'm doing this. I'm gonna zero this out. Um, so, nothing crazy. All right, so 184 grams. Um, here's the thing. <clears throat> so this should be about a hundred and like, 40 grams. So this actually has absorbed a fair bit of water. Never trust the store of vermiculite to be totally absent of humidity slash water, depending on where you live. Um, and I made the mistake last year of trusting that a little too much. And so I took this 186 grams, figured, okay, well, it's just a more dense vermiculite this year because I was getting from a new source. Um, and so I put in 186 grams of water because normally I do a one-to-one -one mix mixture. Um, and yeah, that was too much water because it was actually already a little bit saturated that I then matched one for one in weight with water that I was additionally putting in. Not great. So I'm going to round down. I'm going to put probably about 125 or so, uh, grams of water in, in these containers. Um, at this point you kind of just trust your gut. By and large, I do feel like a lot of people kind of, uh, overthink um, incubation. You know, I've seen them incubate ball pythons in Africa and uh, you know, it was nothing, <laughs> nothing remotely close to sophisticated. I'm just gonna retain a little bit. Not an exact science. Again, it's really it's better to go a little bit lighter than a little bit not as light, I have found. Let me give a good mix. So I'll talk more about the genetics of this clutch. Um, so the dam is slack line level three. Talk about those genetics. The sire was a lily batrix. Now, what is lily? Lily, uh, again, some argument about the mode of inheritance. Some say it's line bred. Others say it's uh, incomplete dominant. My hypothesis is that it's a kind of incomplete dominant hyper red gene. It is kind of like if you were to roll up three generations of selective breeding into one gene, that seems to be what Lily is capable of doing. So, with that in mind, um, it's also combined to uh, Batrix, which is Batik and Matrix. Uh, and so we're crossing that to a slackline level three, which again has a level one, which is a banded trait, a level two, which is kind of like a variegated stripe, and then a level three, which is a, a very clean stripe. Um, and so I'm really kind of throwing a lot of different mixes together and there's really kind of no telling what's uh, gonna come out of that. 
Okay, so, since these are coming out of my uh, Bronger of My Colony, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. I don't trust my adult Bronger of My Colony at all in terms of uh, Serpento or Nidovirus status. I've tested all these animals multiple times and if they're happy, if they're not stressed, they're not gonna break with a rasp and if they're not gonna break with a rasp, they're not gonna pop a positive in my blood python colony specifically. Do not take that to mean that every Serpentovirus acts in that way. The particular strain, strain of blood python Serpentovirus in my colony will not test as positive unless that animal has a reason to test as positive. And as such, it's really freaking hard to get rid of. So these animals, if they're going up for sale, uh, I'm gonna incubate them not in this building. I'm gonna wipe them down with a little bit of F10 first. Um, now it's likely that, that these viruses don't seem to have very long, um, they don't last very long on surfaces. So um, even if I had not opted to kind of sanitize these eggs, there's a pretty good chance, there's, there's almost a, there's very, 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 very little chance that any active virus would be left on these eggshells to then further contaminate this uh, offspring coming out of the egg. That being said, I think it might be a little bit trickier when we start talking about boa viruses since they would be born like directly uh, with mom. And it might also be a little bit different if you're doing maternal incubation where that mom is sitting there breathing on them as they're hatching out. So, uh, Serpentivirus is tricky, um, you know, but it's not anything new. We've been dealing with it as the industry for probably since we started. We just didn't know it. We didn't have a way to test for it until now. And so, um, you know, the, the elevation of our understanding should change. Um, and we need to keep in mind that these are, you know, animals coming in from, uh, you know, wild settings and have the bacteria and viruses and all such to, to go along with that. So you can see essentially how I'm spacing these eggs out. Um, I try to avoid them having direct contact with uh, the outside of the plastic. Um, I try to get a little bit of buffer between them. If they're all stuck together, I really don't bother a whole lot uh, separating them. I just caught this clutch pretty fresh, so I really didn't have to uh, work that hard to keep them separated. Um, it gives you a little bit of degree of control if like something breaks with a fungus or anything like that, you know, you can uh, have a little bit of protection with that. So yeah, um, this is going to be a really neat clutch. I'm throwing a lot of very different, very conflicting um, phenotypes together. I don't know what a, you know, I, I think this is the first time Lily and Slackline have been thrown together. And Lily, it's mainly a color thing, but it does some weird stuff to pattern too, so you know... We'll see. Um, and then I have the level one slack line in there, which is, of course, a banded trait, which I think is going to really try and fight the uh, batik in terms of, of pattern. Um, or maybe it, it gets pushed over by the batik. Who knows? Um, and then I'm throwing in a stripe thing. And uh, batik seems to be fairly suggestible in terms of stripes, especially when you throw in matrix. There seems to be a lot of uh, pretty striped matrix out there. So, um yeah, I'm going to have a, really, a lot of uh, really neat stuff kind of thrown together in this clutch. And uh, yeah, it'll be kind of kind of neat to see what comes out of it. Downside of a clutch like this is if there's a bunch of cool stuff that comes out of it, then there's a bunch of cool stuff that has to stay here and I have to feed and all that. So I should guess I should uh, point out that I'm obviously trying to maintain some semblance of the orientation that they uh, were laid out of mom from. And, uh, you know, you do the best you can. These really are, again, people people really overthink incubation in, in captive snakes. Uh, I encourage anyone who hasn't seen my video of some of the um, snake farms over in Togo and Ghana, West Africa, to check those out and just see like how these, <laughs> how the tens of thousands of ball pythons that make it into our trade, these are not ball pythons obviously, but you know, it's, it's not much different for blood pythons. See how they, uh, you know, get hatched and incubate and stuff like that in their native range and, and you know, kind of just see how much we're maybe overthinking it a little. All right, so last step is to uh, put this uh, present seal wrap on here, and I'm very particular about making sure this has a good seal, so I start with the back, start with the front. Make it nice and taut. So when this happens, where it doesn't stick, that means there's residue left on the tub. It's very important that you don't miss that you will just leak away all of your humidity. Luckily, the uh, fix is pretty simple. You just wipe down the rim, which is a pretty good habit to get into anyway. And then we dry it off. 
So yeah, this is residue left over from uh, a good sanitizer. So it's uh, not a bad thing. So this has a sticky side and a not sticky side. So that's another thing that's important to keep in mind. And look at that, it sticks right down. So again, I do it on the opposite side. Then I run around the rim. And if you have a good seal, it should be like a drum. If you don't have a good seal, it, that air won't, it'll just get pushed out through that hole. It'll feel a little more uh, flimsy. Then uh, we're gonna pop this bad boy in the incubator. I'm incubating at uh, 87 this year. Um, normally I do 88. I figured I'd bump it down a degree just to see what happens. Again, I'm just less and less breeding snakes, more and more of the stuff I'm throwing together is stuff I just really want to kind of see what will happen if I throw them together. Um, and so because of that, uh, it affords me a little bit more leeway in terms of taking risks and stuff. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm taking advantage of that and, you know, putting out a lower temp. Not that incubating at 87 is in anything close to a radical incubation temp. So, you know, you just do what works for you. All right, these guys will be need to put in the system. They'll go in the incubator. Uh, they'll be hatched out. And those offspring, because at some point I may make some of these available and may want some of these to go into a sterile, fresh colony, um, these hatchlings will be brought up in an entirely different building from this uh, to make sure that they are ri uh, risk-free from uh, serpentivirus being passed along from other animals in the building.